April 2022, Dior showcased large-scale embroidered interpretations of a selection of Manu and Madhvi Parikh's artworks commissioned to serve as an art installation for their spring-summer haute couture presentation in Paris. Now, a year later, these 22 monumental embroideries have found their way to India to be shown to a South Asian audience for the first time. As an institution, Asia Society has always been committed to promoting the arts and artistic traditions from across the Asia Pacific. The India Centre has focused particularly on contemporary art from South Asia. And in 2022, we consciously moved towards expanding our cultural mandate and began a long-term series of programmes on craft and vernacular artistic traditions from the region. It was in this context that Mool Mati from the Roots came about. Curated by Asia Society as a postscript to an artistic collaboration that took place between Maria Grazia Curie of Dior, artists Madhavi and Manu Parekh, Karishma Swali and the artisans of the Chanakya Ateliers and School of Craft. Mool Mati is a testament to the shared values of Dior, Chanakya and Asia Society. I think uh, for us, the first reaction when we saw these works was of complete awe. Um, the scale of each of the works, the kind of detailing, the intricacy, the thought, the care that's gone into translating these incredible paintings from Manuji and Madhviji. It's, it's absolutely humbling and awe-inspiring. Close to 320 master craftsmen and students from the Chanakya School of Craft spent hours working on these 22 tapestries. I think what's really important with this project is that it offers new ways in which we can imagine craft, art and fashion to come together to produce something which does not belong to either but borrows from each of these traditions. And I think that's where the magic is. I think this artistic partnership began as an organic dialogue and it was really a coming together of our um, aligned vision for craft excellence um, and this idea of celebrating our artisanal legacies um, through an amplified voice that blurs the lines between art and craft. Mool has many meanings across several Indian languages. It refers to a starting point, a foundation, a root. But it also has an earthiness and can mean native, like the techniques used to make the artworks in this exhibition, or even primal, like the raw energy they exude. In Gujarati, which is the language of Manu and Madhvi, and also Karishma, Mool Mati loosely translates to from the roots. And the idea behind this exhibition was to bring together and unpack the making of a collaborative project that resembles a network of multitudinous roots that hold up a mighty tree. It challenges the very idea of Mool, or singular source, which one cannot trace in this exhibition. For us, as curators of this exhibition, we wanted to celebrate, document and display the artistic processes that these works represent, not only as records for the future, but also in an effort to demystify Indian craft for the general public and to showcase its creative richness and potential at its peak. We experimented with the lighting and design to allow people to see and engage with the works in different ways. They can go up close and see every detail of every thread, every colour, every shade and also step back and take the work in as a whole. Along with the works themselves, which are incredible in their scale and innovation, we have shown archival material that allows one to engage with the art making at a deeper level. We also have 
few of the original paintings which were source inspirations for these artworks on display. I think it's particularly amazing when you see these works and then see the scaled up versions and see the translation or rather the transliteration that went into this process. The response to this exhibition has been phenomenal. It's been overwhelming to see the number of people that have come to see the exhibition. Um, and as an institution that's committed to making public these kinds of conversations around craft, uh, around art, around the hierarchies that exist between them, um, to see the people engaging with it, that's what makes it the most special. We had a reading room that we've made, which is a temporary library of sorts, where we have uh, books on, on embroidery, on textiles, on handicrafts and handlooms from across uh, India, but also across South Asia. We have a wonderful group of trained docents or art guides who have taken the time to understand the background to this project, to this exhibition and are here every single day walking people through it, talking about the curatorial vision of the exhibition and it's been amazing to see how people have really responded to that and have learned so much from these art guides. In just three weeks we welcomed over 4,600 visitors held over 800 guided walkthroughs with individuals, but also schools and colleges from around the city and other special groups, and hosted a public panel discussion on the role of institutional collaboration in the crafts, which added to our interest in promoting scholarship around craft and artisanal practices. For us, uh, this exhibition is a curatorial intervention to create awareness and above all care, but it is also a critical reflection on the possibilities of collaboration and patronage towards the preservation and sustainability of craft-based artistic work. Today it's uh, difficult and unrealistic to leave the entire responsibility of preserving handicrafts to large institutions in the government. And therefore the exhibition hopes to encourage the active participation and emotional investment of the public to sustain our intangible heritage. Often it's hard to appreciate the creative innovation that goes into craft practices and we sometimes reduce it to skill and time and labor. While it is all three things, it is equally an art form and a creative practice. We hope that this exhibition is able to communicate that and that our viewers, much like us, become champions of our crafts.